This time, small varmints at very long ranges. It's precision shooting with bench rest rifles. Plus, the Remington 700 is one of history's guns. And families compete together at the Rimfire Challenge World Championship. This is Shooting USA, reporting the stories of America's shooting sports. In 25 years of reporting the shooting sports, it's not often we've seen a whole new sport emerging, but it appears to be happening. It's actually the merging of two traditional disciplines, silhouette shooting at animal sized steel targets offhand out to 500 meters and bench rest shooting tight groups to win. It started in Ridgeway, Pennsylvania, where the Silhouette Club went at it with bulldozers, lengthening their range to a thousand yards to shoot varmint targets. But in Texas, the idea is to use a silhouette range, but reduce the size of the varmint targets. Here's the coyote, the target on the 385 meter rail. It's Texas varmint bench rest, and it's a challenge. They say everything is bigger in Texas, but not here, not in Coolidge. The 200 meter target here is this little guy. Just two inches wide, a bit less than one minute of angle, sitting on the 200 meter rail. Essentially the idea is to have targets that are approximately a minute of angle one direction, maybe two minutes the other. Some targets placing the emphasis on good windage um, and others placing the emphasis on having your elevation perfect. The higher you get, the more narrow it is. So the best shot placement is, is down here. You can usually see your misses, uh, but the most exciting thing is seeing your hits, because when you see them hit, these things really go airborne. Travis Frazier rightfully knows the best place to hit the prairie dog because, well, he designed it, along with a few other animals on the range here in the Lone Star State. We have a little armadillo. Um, again, we wanted to stick with, with animals that were reflective of, of the native habitat here. So prairie dog, armadillo, coyote, and, and, and feral hog are, are, are pretty common here in Texas. And there are 10 of each. The three inch armadillos sit at 300 meters. Then the three by five inch coyotes at 385. And the five by four inch hogs at 500 meters. Then there are the typical silhouette targets on swingers, a chicken at 600 yards, and a pig at 750. Shooters have 10 rounds per animal. It's a similar concept we've seen before in Ridgeway, Pennsylvania. The creators named it Varmint Bench Rest Silhouette. And it all takes place at Ridgeway's famous thousand yard range. But if you don't have that kind of space, you improvise. So that's what David Brady and the Heart of Texas Silhouette Association did by putting tiny targets on traditional silhouette rails, but still with the same challenge as at Ridgeway. I want to attract the old bench guys, the F-class guys, the silhouette guys. So I tried to blend everything I could think of from every discipline into one little sport. So I had to make the target smaller. And it has attracted a few dozen shooters here today to try this new Texas version of varmint bench rest silhouettes. F-class shooters, bench rest shooters, and even a precision rifle shooter. John is taking shots at the varmints too. Here we go. Every shooter has 10 rounds and 10 minutes to hit 10 prairie dogs. Fire. Then another 10 minutes, 10 rounds to hit the 10 armadillos and so on. Each animal is worth one point. Since there are six total animals at six different distances, 60 points are possible here. The shooter who hits the most wins, but not without some help. Like high power silhouette, varmint bench rest silhouette is a two man job. Center mass. And every shooter has a spotting partner to help navigate those hits or misses and to read this Texas wind. 
Silhouettes is a wonderful sport, it's like a sniper team. You get to work together. You have to know each other, work together, because you got to help each other. You know, as I old saying, you can teach a monkey to pull a trigger. But the real skill is in the spotty. But some find the trigger time more fun, like 16-year-old Will Taranjo, who today is the shooter paired with family friend Daryl Martin. Wind is mild right now. He's just a wonderful kid. I'd love to see him win it. I, he probably doesn't have a smart enough coach to do that, but, <laughs> but I'd love to see him win it. And he does have a chance to win. Will is catching on and racking up points. The first relay, I got eight out of 10 of the coyotes, and the uh, second relay of the hogs, I got seven out of 10. I mean, I probably wouldn't go into a career at a, as a shooter, but I mean, I'm gonna do it for the rest of my life. Well, there aren't any pro shooters in varmint bench rest silhouette yet. Just new fans trying it out, like Bob Poffenbarger. I'm having a ball. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I, um, I've been a bench rest shooter. I was a, a silhouette shooter and a F class shooter. I just never liked shooting paper because it doesn't move. <laughs> But this is fun. The targets are reactive. And this new sport is accommodating to shooters like Bob, who is confined to a chair. I was a Marine, and uh, I got wounded uh, in Vietnam uh, on September the 11th, 1966. And it left me without the use of my legs and my arm. But I really had a good life. I've got a wife, and I've got three children, and I've got four grandchildren. I've been pretty happy, and I can still shoot. And he does it well, thanks to his team of a spotter and a loader, who are here to help throw a few hogs off a rail. Yeah, we've got a real team. <laughs> I've got I've got a loader. All I have to do is lift the, the bolt and pull it back and pull the trigger. I got it. <laughs> lift the bolt, pull it back, and pull the trigger. Easy enough. But there's a wide range of rifles and cartridges lined up on the firing line, from F-Class to bench rest to high power. This new sport has brought them all out to shoot. We'll take a closer look at what works when we continue. Introducing the M&P M2.0 by Smith & Wesson, enhanced for complete shootability. Featuring a new aggressive grip texture, the famous M&V Optimal Grip Angle. Four interchangeable palm swell grips for nearly any hand size. A light, crisp trigger with a clear tactile reset. Everything you love about the M&P pistol made even better. The new M&P M2.0, advanced by design. Shooting USA is brought to you by Smith & Wesson and the new M&P 2.0 pistol, advanced again by design. Texas Varmint Benchrest has brought out the competitors from a variety of accuracy sports and their highly specialized rifles and cartridges. And this new competition has also brought individual match techniques, all to help knock down tiny targets set at long range. Just gonna put a patch on, wet the patch, in between relays, you'll find Chuck Dodson cleaning his rifle. If you get too much fouling in the barrel, uh, you'll start to gain velocity and it'll shoot out of your accuracy node. So what I'm trying to do is keep the gun consistent. Now, when I go back to the line, I'm gonna have to fire several fouling shots back through the barrel to get it, bring it back into tune. And we clean up our mess and we're done. It's a short process that goes a long way Chuck says his data on this rifle won't change throughout the match because he started shooting it with a clean barrel. So for him, a little housekeeping results in consistency. But not everyone at the Heart of Texas Association's first Varmint bench rest silhouette match follows Chuck's technique. For Gary Warlow, it's shooting two rifles. I want to shoot the one gun at shorter distance. It was a 223 in the end. I shot a 6.5, 47 for the real long distance out to 750. 
So this tack driver is Gary's choice for those longer shots, custom built as a bench rest rifle in Texas. It's just a 6547 Lapua. It was made by SNS Precision in Denton for me about a year ago, so it's been a really good gun so far. It's got a stiller action, uh, X-ring rifle uh, stock, Krieger barrel. It's 28 inches. It might be just a tad shorter than most. A lot of guys will run a 30-inch barrel. I'm running 28 on this one, so and it's it's done really good this year. Compared to the 223 Remington, the 6547 Lapua is a newer caliber. Introduced in 2005, the round is highly accurate at long ranges, and in Gary's 22-pound rifle with muzzle brake, well, the recoil is reduced. There's virtually no recoil on this, this gun here. It'll kick a little bit, but not very much. So you, when you shoot with a muzzle brake, you can, you can pretty well see what you're hitting. Seeing your impact is a payoff to this sport. Just ask the man who built Gary's gun. That's pretty much the thrill and excitement there, is uh, hitting that target. Satisfaction at the end of the, the project. Michael Vesperman is a 26-year-old gunsmith who gets a kick out of bench rest. It is definitely an older man sport, but I enjoy it a bunch. Just a lot of fun. A lot of fun building the guns and, and watching them shoot. And then guys I shoot with, they shoot and shoot really well. Michael's choice is a 25-pound setup. This is a six millimeter bench rest. It is a Stiller Viper with a Krieger barrel and a Robertson, original Robertson F-Class stock with a uh, 12 to 42 Night Force bench rest. This is about your typical uh, F-Class setup for a lot of guys. It's about the most accurate setup that you can go with right now uh, for accuracy, reliability, uh, repetitiveness. And his loading port may look unusual, but it is becoming more common in these long-range precision disciplines. So you got it set up as a left-right is basically for time events. So you load with your left and you uh, work the action with your right. It's just so you're not getting off the gun very much. You got both hands are operating. So the left is loading and the right's working the bolt. So just, it helps speeds things up. And sometimes that speed is necessary when the wind is just right for a short period of time within those 10 minute relays. Still, picking the right system all comes down to choosing your accuracy and how much you're willing to spend. Dollarize what was on that line today. That's a bunch of money. Most of them rigs are four or $5,000 a piece. Anybody can do this. And then they can grow with the sport as they financially want to or seem fit or whatever the case may be. But to start, if you have a rifle and a scope, you can shoot it at the Heart of Texas Silhouette Association in the newest version of Varmint Benchrest Silhouette. The welcome mat is out for new shooters in the sport and you don't have to spend thousands to start. Most any new rifle is accurized to one minute of angle. This is a one MOA target, so you could hit it. Among the guys with the heavy gear, the high score was 53 out of 60. And the 16-year-old Will Taranjo, he took fourth with 51 targets. Well, coming next, our precision rifle shooter takes on the Varmints. It's different gear and a different position for John, shooting in the Texas wind. Tradition meets innovation. Ready for any competitive arena. The new Colt Competition Pistol, featuring dual spring recoil system. Novak's new adjustable rear sight and fiber optic front sight. Competition ergonomics. National match barrel and 9mm and 45. Innovation at a competitive price. American made and only available at Colt stocking dealers. Colt, built one at a time, proven every round. Shooting USA is brought to you by Les Bear Customs 1911s, hand fitted to perfection because you'll accept nothing less. I think you know John has been competing in the Precision Rifle Series competition that combines challenging movement with long range targets. He's pretty well mastered minute of angle shooting, so one MOA targets would seem a fair challenge for him and his gear.
Well, we're at the Heart of Texas Silhouette Association Varmint Bench Rest Match, and uh, I'm going to be taking this on with my precision rifle gear, so that's a little bit different than some of the bench rest outfits that these guys have brought. These are some tiny targets. This is going to be a real test for me and my rifle. I'll be running Hornady's ELD match ammo in 6.5 Creedmoor, and my rig is topped with a Bushnell Elite Tactical XRS 4.5 to 30, which helps magnify those small targets. And to make this match even more interesting, I'm shooting prone, which is the most stable position for me, since I have a Harris bipod and not a rest. My partner, Travis Frazier, is also shooting prone. And as it turns out, we have a lot in common. John, you know, you get to talking to him and, you know, asking a few questions and you realize we have a half dozen things in common, you know, beyond the shooting. I mean, we're the same age. We have kids similar ages. We both enjoy the same CrossFit type of exercise. Uh, we both lived in Ann Arbor, Michigan for a while. So, you know, all these things, you just kind of, just camaraderie on the range. And at the same time, you're spotting for him, helping him, but you want to beat him, right? I mean, you don't, you don't want to have the new guy show up with his tactical rifle and whip you in your own game. Why don't we just let our guns do the talking? My first target is the hogs at 500 meters. Here we go. Hit! You say left? Miss to the right. To the right. Skip that one. Roger. Hit, good job. Is that a seven? Yes, sir. I'll take it. Seven out of 10 for the hogs. A couple of things that I just figured out after my first course of fire. Number one, the adrenaline dump. Number two, I need to slow it down. I'm shooting a lot faster than these guys in a 10 minute time limit. I was done in like four minutes. He says he's used to loading a magazine and shooting as fast as he can at targets that are quite a bit bigger than these. So I had to tell him several times, you've got plenty of time, you know. You've got another five minutes. You don't need to shoot all your cartridges in two minutes. You can wait for your condition to come back. Now Travis is up, and it's my turn to spot for him. Impact, dead center hit. Elevation is good, a quarter target left. I'm more of a minute of angle guy where he's more of a first focal plane mill guy. Um, so that was more of the come ups. But once, once you start engaging the targets, we start talking in terms of target size. Impact, just ahead of the shoulder. Elevation is good. Travis hits five of 10 hogs. Now Coyotes at 385, and I need to be patient with this win. In the right. Further right. Remember that target's bigger towards the bottom. Okay. I'm fighting a swirling left to right wind. Yep. All right. That was the one I was worried about. Those are super, super small targets. Now for the smallest varmint on the range, these prairie dogs are especially difficult. So here's a little frame of reference. At 200 meters, that's your target. At 385 meters, almost a quarter mile away, that's your target. Both of these are going home with me. I took four of 10 out of these guys. I took zero of 10 on the Coyote. So I'm 14 of 40 for these small varmints, but it's not over yet. I've been waiting all day to take these long shots at the swinging targets. When my final event, they finally give me a target I can shoot at 750 yards and basically a two MOA went eight for 10, I'm happy with that. That's the kind of shooting that wants you to, that gets you to come back. That's that golf shot that makes you want to try again. And I'll be back again for redemption. We all just enjoy shooting and we all enjoy trying to beat one another, competitive shooting. I beat John, so I'm proud of that. You know, we talk about bragging rights. That was some right there. Well, Travis may have beat me then, but I'll be better prepared next time. And I've got a few of the targets to practice with. So a rematch. Oh, definitely. I will be going back. All right. Well, next today.
the rifle that has set the standard for hunters, snipers, and enthusiasts. The Remington 700 is one of history's guns. And later, a six-year-old hotshot competes with pistol for her first time. Out of all you'll spend on shooting this year, this is the most important, a membership in the NRA. Join at ShootingUSA.com and I'll pay $10 for you. It's that important. The Serpa Level 2 Tactical Holster by Blackhawk. Honor as a way of life. Shooting USA is brought to you by Blackhawk. Honor as a way of life. And by Colt. Built one at a time, proven every round. Remington has been building firearms for 200 years, making it the oldest continuously operating firearms manufacturer in the United States. Over the years, the company has made many iconic sporting and military arms, but one Remington rifle has left a legacy few others can match. Introduced 50 years ago and still in production, the Model 700 Bolt Action Rifle is now one of history's guns. It is one of the most revered hunting arms in history and the standard by which all other bolt action sporting rifles are measured. Produced for more than half a century in calibers ranging from 17 up to 458 Win Mag, the Remington Model 700. Well, the Remington Model 700 is unquestionably the most successful American sporting rifle ever made. There's sporting versions, there's hunting versions, there's target versions, there's military sniper versions. Uh, it goes on and on and on and on. Remington introduced the Model 700 in 1962 and is still manufacturing it to this day. The company has produced more than six million of the firearms, advertising it as the rifle of choice for America's true rifleman. It was produced at a fair price by Remington. They had very, very good marketing. Came out at a really good time in 1962. It's just a good, simple, solid system. People like simple and solid and good. The basic Model 700 is the ADL, Gary is shooting a deluxe hunting version, the 700 BDL. This particular gun uh, holds a special place in my heart. It's uh, the first sporting rifle that I ever owned. When my folks gave it to me for Christmas in 1962, so it's a first year of production. It's a BDL in um, uh, .30-06, which is my dad's favorite caliber, and by the way, mine. Not to mention a favorite of many other sportsmen. Indeed, the 30 6 is among the most popular and effective cartridges on Earth. It's used in the 03 Springfield and lots and lots of other military rifles in World War I, World War II, and since then. Great, 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 great round. I mean, it's accurate, it's a good sporting round, it's a good target round. It's one of the, to my mind, 10 great rounds in history. The BDL came equipped with a Weaver four-power scope and sling. Refinements include handsome fleur de -lis checkering and white spacers on the fore and butt stocks. Gary's rifle also features an eye-catching jeweled bolt, centerpiece of this world-class action. Very, very nice action, very smooth. Works every time. I've been using it for years and I've had no major problems with it at all. There's not too much uh, complicated about the gun. It's, it's very user-friendly and uh, it works just fine. The rifle also has an internal box magazine holding three, four, or five cartridges, depending on the caliber. Loading the magazine in a Model 700 is nothing particularly magical. It's just like you do on most sporting rifles. Just push them down in against the follower, close it, and uh, chambers the first round, and you're ready to go. And if the shooter has unspent cartridges, those are easy enough to remove. Just click the button on the trigger guard, open the floor plate, and pop the cases out. 
It's got a good action. Uh, it's reliable. It's rugged. It does what it's supposed to do, and uh, not much more you can ask for from a good rifle. Of course, it should be accurate, too. And the Model 700 fills that bill, and not just in the woods or on the range. Remington has produced police and sniper variants of its famous bolt rifle, deployed both in America and in countries around the world, all built on the legendary 700 action. Versatile, accurate, reliable, and still in production after more than 50 years. There's not a lot of firearms you can say that have had that kind of longevity and that kind of success. When you got something really nice, you just don't mess with it. And uh, they got a, got a pretty good product there. Better than that, Remington's Model 700 is truly a world-class rifle. Very, very, very nice gun. It's a, just one heck of a great hunting rifle, one heck of a great rifle. The Remington 700 Gary was shooting was a Christmas gift from his parents the year he turned 16, and it shoots as well today as ever. And stories like that are an important part of the Model 700's legacy. Tradition and family values pass from one generation to the next. Gary plans to pass the rifle on to one of his grandchildren. Well, up next, families plinking on steel at the Rimfire World Championships. This is custom gun making, hand fitting, slide to frame, hand cutting the magwell, blending the surfaces of the slide, the frame, and the beaver tail. At every step, a Les Bear Custom 1911 is hand fitted to tolerances no CNC machine can match for match grade accuracy. And a Les Bear Custom 1911 is priced at one third of what you'd pay any other gun maker. See all the 1911s and rifles at lesbear.com. Shooting USA is brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. You know, most of us started shooting with dad's 22 caliber pistol or rifle at soda cans or playing cards. The light ammunition plus minimal recoil and reactive targets are the perfect combination to get started in shooting. So it's no wonder steel shooting at the Rimfire Challenge World Championship is bringing more people into the shooting sports for some family-friendly competition. It's fast, it's fun, and for many, it's a family tradition. We've hit the World Championships the last four years and wouldn't miss it. It's been great every year. A lot of friends, family, uh, good time shooting, and uh, Quaid loves it. He just turned nine. I think it's a fun experience to do competitive shooting, to race against our people. Corey and Quaid Hallam are two of 250 shooters competing at the Rimfire Challenge World Championship in Woodville, Alabama. For us, Rimfire is a great way for people to get involved in a shooting sport. You know, it's something where uh, kids can do it with their parents, husbands can do it with their wives. So we just feel it's really important to offer these types of events out there so people can come in and see what, uh, you know, uh, competitive shooting is all about. But unlike other steel competitions, this match requires two guns, a 22 caliber pistol and a 22 caliber rifle. A lot of the steel shooting events are a single gun event. Uh, here we're involving two guns, so we're, we're splitting our match in half, so you got eight pistol stages and eight rifle stages. A lot of times you won't see that in some of the other events, so we've, we're shooting uh, 16 stages here this weekend. Targets also vary in size, shape, distance, and quantity. We're shooting anywhere from five to eight targets. Uh, we have plates down as small as eight inches. Now, if you're holding eight inches in your hand, it looks pretty good size. When you put it out on a post at, at 45 feet, it's really tiny. <laughs> and when you're looking at it through one of our optics, it's even tinier. Shooters begin in the low ready position, muzzle aimed at the start target. Then it's a shooter's choice on how each stage is shot but the target marked in red, known as the stop plate, must be hit last. Everyone shoots each stage five times, but only the four fastest times count for score. And since this competition is based on speed, your stage time is your score in seconds. 
I generally will shoot uh, Steel Challenge. And um, you have eight stages, they're all alike, and you come here and it's totally different and uh, it's a sport that I really enjoy and I'll be back doing it again. Robert Kassan has adapted to this sport despite losing four fingers on his right hand in an industrial accident years ago. Yes, I was a natural right-handed shooter, right eye dominant, and um, decided that uh, you had two things in life. Either you go in a corner and feel sorry for yourself, or you decide, hey, you know what? There's more to life than this, and we're gonna do whatever we can do, whatever we enjoy, and I enjoyed shooting. You adapt, simple as that. Part of the appeal to this sport is the minimal recoil, thanks to the 22 caliber ammunition. And another draw, according to the father of six-year-old hotshot, Venice Oliver, is the reactive target. The steel gives them a positive reaction. Uh, that way, the, it's an audible reaction that they hear, and it ensures them that they're hitting their target. Uh, the speed, they absolutely love. They get to shoot it fast. It's, it's not standing for an hour trying to shoot bullseye targets. They're usually over in just five to six seconds. So it keeps their interest and, and keeps them working faster. And today is a milestone for Ron. Little Venice is about to compete with her special pistol for the first time. So we started off with the Smith & Wesson Victory. It actually has the factory barrel that I've machined to drop a little bit of weight. Didn't do too much to the trigger system, lightened it a little bit to where she wouldn't be pulling on the gun too hard. I modified the hand grip to where it would fit her hand a little better, and pretty much it's it's a factory victory out of the box. I mean, I, I just got some add-ons to it, but it, it's ready to run, and, and you know, Smith & Wesson has done a great job with that victory. But some of Ron's changes for Venice might find their way into the next version of the Smith & Wesson Victory. Well done. So you got a lot of people um, talking about how they've purchased them, they've, they've modified them, enhanced them, they've really made them their own. And then we also get some feedback for suggestions that we'll take back to the engineers and say, hey, this is a great idea. We wonder if we can work at this into a product line in the future. Good job, Daddy. So it's fantastic when, when manufacturers get involved with us because that gives us the support that we need. And they also listen to what parents are needing with their children and they, they are meeting that demand. Uh, I think it's pretty fun and it's fun. Well, Venice has me convinced. And now that you've met a six-year-old at the Rimfire Challenge World Championship, coming next we'll meet the oldest competitor and the young guns who are shooting to the top of the scoreboard. Day after day, it's there. It's ready for when you need it the most. The Rapid Safe combines fast, touch free ease of use with safety and security. The Rapid Safe from Hornady. Shooting USA is brought to you by CompTAC Everyday Carry Holsters and by STI and the continuing evolution of the 1911. There is a lot of training involved leading up to the Rimfire Challenge World Championship for those at the top of the game. And this year, they're prepared. We're seeing some lightning fast times from the top competitors, most of whom are juniors with some completing the all-steel stages in less than three seconds. In between stages at the Rimfire Challenge World Championship, you'll see Chase Orr getting some rest. But don't let that fool you, the 14-year-old is prepared to win. Clean. Last year at Worlds, they were a bunch of little plates, so this year I knew that they would be little, so we actually got some four-inch plates made, and then after that, I started practicing all this week much as I could. Chase has only been shooting for two years, but he has the stamina and confidence needed to be a champion. I'm just trying to think, Chase, just do what you do and do it best. Match director Jeff Blackwell is seeing more competitive young shooters like Chase at the top of the game. A lot of our faster shooters out here are under the age of 20. And you're going to see some two-second string times out here uh, for kids at 16, 17, 18 years old. It's kind of a two-edged sword because we taught them how to shoot, but we taught them how to shoot really well, and now they're beating us. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Jennifer and Terry Dalton aren't competing against their daughters, but they are playing an essential role loading magazines. Yeah, between that and taking pictures and videos, I think the parents will both have, will both have calluses on our fingers by the end of the weekend. The Daltons introduced their girls to guns years ago, and now they're hooked on the competition side of shooting. Cheyenne is 15 with two passions, shooting and performing with her bluegrass band. I love music. Music is relaxing to me, and I love doing shows, but sometimes that can be a bit stressful, and this can just be fun where you just go out and shoot, and there's really no thinking involved. Today, Cheyenne is shooting with her little sister, Maddie, but next year there may be another Dalton on the firing line. I love it that kids are getting involved because they're the future of the sport, and if they don't get involved, then shooting will just slowly go away. And I hope to get my little brother started. He's five, so I'm hoping to be able to build him like a little rifle and little pistol to shoot pretty soon. Not all competitors at the Rimfire Challenge World Championship have that youthful glow, but everyone here is among the presence of a hero. Captain Gerald Johnson received the Purple Heart for his service in Korea. I went in in uh, 1951. I served over in Korea. I um, came out, I joined the National Guard unit, and I stayed in for, I guess I ended up between my active military and my military reserve. 31 years, two months, and 13 days. Gerald shot on the National Guard rifle team years ago, and now, at 85, He's competing again. It's a lot of fun, and the thing that impresses me is watching all these young kids shoot. Uh, they're remarkable. They're just, you know, they're quick, they're fast. It's just fun watching them. Like many shooters, Gerald is also here with family, his daughter-in-law and son. We go to these matches all the time together and uh, my mom comes, brings the dog with, and babysits the dog, and we just get to go and hang out and uh, have a good time. He's been through so much in his life and done so much for the country and was a Korean War vet, uh, but he has such a great positive attitude and it's just a really fun person to be around, uh, and he makes this event really fun for us. Even with a shoulder injury, Gerald overcomes the challenges of aging and manages to compete with family for a good time at the range. The arm issue is a problem for him because he can't lock his arms out so the recoil doesn't function the gun quite right. But he's shooting pretty good. I tell you, if I'm 85 and can still even navigate out here, I'll be happy. I don't go for speed. <laughs> In the end, 16-year-old Colby Pavlock won the Rimfire World Championship, while Chase placed first in the Junior Open Division and Cheyenne took first in the ladies' limited division. Congratulations to the winners, but we also acknowledge this discipline is not so much about being in the top, but about encouraging new shooters to give this competition a try. Well, coming next, first shots with the new Smith & Wesson, the M&P 2.0. Introducing the M&P M2.0 by Smith & Wesson, enhanced for complete shootability. Featuring a new aggressive grip texture, the famous M&P Optimal Grip Angle, four interchangeable palm swell grips for nearly any hand size, a light crisp trigger with a clear tactile reset. Everything you love about the M&P pistol made even better. The new M&P M2.0, advanced by design. Shooting USA is brought to you by Smith & Wesson and the new M&P 2.0 pistol, advanced again by design. It sounds like a software upgrade, the M&P 2.0, but it is all about the hardware. Ten years into production of the highly successful M&P line of pistols, Smith has done a full upgrade, incorporating some 35 enhancements to the original design. Most notable is the new, more aggressive texture on both the receiver grip and the inserts. And there are now four insert sizes, small, medium, medium, large, and large. So you can get a more precise fit, no matter what size your hand may be. 
Internally, the 2.0 is the first polymer pistol to mold in two full-length stainless steel chassis inserts to stiffen the entire receiver. John was the first to get out to Royal Range in Nashville to get some shots downrange. Shooting Hornady's new American Gunner 9mm in the 5 inch. It's a 115 grain XTP hollow point and it is very manageable in this package. There is no question that this new grip texturing really bonds to the hand, making easy, accurate follow up shots possible with the new MMP. The big news is in the trigger at just over five pounds out of the box, and the real enhancement within that system is the reset. The old M&P trigger was a bit soft, and there were solutions for that from the aftermarket. Smith & Wesson paid attention, and they now have the best fulcrum design trigger out of the box in a factory gun, bar none. These are the first two models to be in the market. They're at your gun dealer right now in 9mm or 40 s and 45 ACP will be next to arrive with a choice of features, thumb safety or not, magazine disconnect or not. Smith & Wesson will be working their way through the entire line with all variations getting the 2.0 enhancements. And the price, take your choice of either at $599 suggested retail. So, how are you going to carry the M&P 2.0? Well, you may already have the answer since the dimensions are the same as the previous version. But CompTech has a whole lineup of options for you. Here is the convertible model for the 5 inch that sets up either for belt carry or inside the waistband with the included hardware. This is the four and a quarter inch also in green with thumb brake retention for duty or concealed carry. Here are two versions for inside the waistband carry, both with leather shields to keep you comfortable. And this is the competition version for the new M&P with the low cut front to facilitate a fast draw. The International is very popular in IDPA competition. All of these are from Comtec Victory Gear, ranging in price from $50 up to $80. And we have links to find each of these at shootingusa.com. Well, up next, Colt Combat Unit member Ken Hackathorn debunks a myth that will improve your reloads. On March 29, 1911, the armed forces adopted a pistol that would change the world. For decades to come, men and women relied on the most trusted pistol in history as they fought the toughest battles to protect our freedom. Today, we celebrate another great victory, introducing the all-new Colt Competition Pistol, designed for heroes, created for champions. We didn't just make history, we're still making it. Shooting USA is brought to you by Hoppies, the gun care people since 1903. It's a fact, you're only as good as your training and in a defensive pistol scenario, you must prepare for any and all situations. And training is not just limited to shooting, but should also include handling and clearing malfunctions. Well, that's where Colt Combat Unit member Ken Hackathorn comes in to show us how to reload effectively. What you just witnessed was an emergency reload from slide lock. Looked pretty simple, but there's a lot of little details that we need to discuss. Okay, let's take this step by step. I'm going to insert an empty magazine into my Colt Combat Unit 1911 pistol. Moving parts lock the rear. Nothing in the chamber, empty magazine. My sights are on target. 
How do I know my gun's empty? I'm pulling the trigger and nothing's happened. First thing I want to do is I want to bring the pistol into my workspace. That's a distance approximately from here to here. Chin, I want the pistol right here. Not down, not out here, right up from the workspace. That way I can see what's going on in my threat zone. You lower the gun, there's no bad guys down here, but they're out there doing something. Bring the gun right to your workspace. Next thing I do is get the empty magazine out. I want to move the gun so that either I get my thumb on the magazine release by flipping it in my hand like so, or I can use the base of the index finger on my support hand under the trigger guard and drag the gun around so it drags my thumb right to the magazine release. And what I'm going to do is when I bring it around, I'm going to dump it. Support hand comes right down to the magazine pouch. Key point, when you draw your magazine, you want your finger right up the front so it guides the magazine right up into the pistol. One smooth stroke. Once we get that magazine seated in the pistol, how do I get the moving parts forward? There's a couple ways to do it, and we're going to debunk a myth that a lot of people perpetuate in this industry. When you seat the magazine to get the slide forward in a round and battery, you can grab the slide and pull back, we call a power stroke, or you can slingshot and release it or you can use your thumb to release the slide. Now, some people will argue, well, you can't do this because it's a fine motor skill. That's bull. If you can take your thumb and press the magazine release to drop it out, you can use your thumb to press the slide release to get around in battery. And watch what happens when I seat the pistol and my Colt 1911 combat unit, look where my thumb ends up. It's right by the slide lock. Press it, the gun's in battery, right back on target. I don't have to do something right, power stroke it, and my hand has to come back. Seat it, push it, I'm on target, ready to fight again. A couple minor key points you need to be aware of. If you turn the pistol on its side, gravity's not gonna work with the magazine. Keep it up and down so the magazine will fall free. If for some reason the magazine sticks as you're coming up with a spare, don't shake it, don't trade it like it's a snake you're trying to get rid of. Simply come right up, flip it out, put the fresh magazine in, moving parts forward, back into the fight. Remember, everything you do right in life takes practice. Critical skill, practice it. Thanks, Ken. It is a critical skill for both combat and competition. We have a transcript at the website so you can review for your practice. Plus, where to sign up your family for next year's Rimfire Challenge World Championship. And we have a link to the Heart of Texas Silhouette Association if you're thinking about the new version of Varmint Benchrest Silhouette. Find all the info at shootingusa.com. For all of us, I'm Jim Scout, and shoot safely, shoot often, and keep them on the coyote.